So let's talk guitars. Uh, I've got a really, really great array of guitars here that we're shipping out of the Emerald Factory today. And what I wanted to do is just assume that you guys know nothing about what we do and why we're doing this. So first of all, the shipping video. Uh, this is just a great opportunity that we take every week just to tell you about the guitars that we've built over the previous weeks and uh, that are leaving our, our factory. It's a great way for you guys to see exactly what we do and the, the type of variation that we build. It's also a great thing for us as a team here at Emerald just to really be able to focus on what we've actually achieved over the course of a week. What we do here as a company, why Emerald exists and what we do, we build um, carbon fiber acoustic guitars. And uh, all our guitars, they're made from carbon fiber using our, our innovative one piece molding technology. So the entire guitar is molded uh, in one piece without any joins. So it comes out of the mold with the top and the back and the neck, everything all in one piece. So that makes a guitar that is incredibly strong and stable. Uh, carbon fiber is not then affected by temperature and humidity. So if you happen to live in the in the middle of Arizona in the desert, uh, you'll, you'll hear often guitars going to Arizona and it's great for that way because carbon won't crack, it won't suck the moisture out of your guitar. If you live in the middle of Tennessee, uh, like uh, where this t-shirt came from, uh, and you know it's hot and humid there in the summer, you'll know that that can just really affect your, your guitar if you're taking it outside and it really gets full of moisture. Um, so, uh, so carbon fiber is a great way to build a guitar and uh, we love the opportunity to be able to build them in very different ways. Uh, our molding technology allows us to, to build innovative shapes, so you're gonna see things like our harp ukulele uh, right down to our double neck guitar, and uh, we, we can build in a lot more ergonomics. So we, because we mold a guitar rather than trying to shape wood, uh, we're able to change some of the contours and the little subtle details that just make a guitar feel more comfortable and easier to play. Uh, you're also going to see a lot of different wood veneers on the top. So carbon fiber is a beautiful material in itself. Uh, and what you'll see is that we put different colors over the top of it and uh, to try and make that you know, even more beautiful. But we really like the natural beauty of, uh, of a, an exotic piece of wood. So what we've done is we've been able to couple uh, wood veneers together with uh, really nice um, carbon finishes. Uh, just to be able to give you something that's just really special. So you're going to see that through this video. So that's who we are, that's what we do. And uh, I just thought it'd be a good idea to bring you up to speed. Um, so what you're going to see is a good few guitars going out to the USA today. One going out to Taiwan, uh, UK here, uh, the island of Guernsey, Canada. Uh, another one in Canada. And, uh, and I want to thank Daryl in Tennessee for sending me this t-shirt. His guitar was in last week's video. So you'll often see me wearing t-shirts that people have sent me and I love that whenever somebody sends us something and uh, just kind of connects us to where you're from. So, uh, so if you, if you uh, want to do that, feel free and always enjoy wearing them and the other guys in the office too. Uh, size wise, at the moment I'm a large, I'm working towards medium, but I'm still large. So first one up today is, um, a harp ukulele. So our harp ukulele is a tenor ukulele uh, with four extra strings and uh, if you look at the Emerald range we do a range of harp guitars, uh, the Synergy X20, X7 and then the little baby of them is the, the Synergy harp ukulele and uh, it's just a really nice instrument. You've got that tenor ukulele here but with the four extra uh, bass strings it just allows you to play a really nice accompaniment over the top. So if you don't know what a harp ukulele is, Google it, uh, go to YouTube, find some videos. So, uh, so this one's going out to Christopher in Ontario, finished in our beautiful green carbon. And uh, it's a, a really nice one to start on. So you always start in the smallest here. Um, then Ryan in Colorado, he's got the first of two of our um, amicus. So uh, whenever they're together, we call them the amici. Uh, we, we kind of had a big debate on that, so we think two amicus together rather than amicusus is an amici. I'm in a talkative mood today, so uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of nonsense. Here, uh, this is an amicus, it's a short scale 12 string guitar. It's an 18 inch scale and it is tuned the same as if you're putting a capo in your 10th fret. The strings are tuned in unison rather than in octaves like a regular guitar. And uh, yeah, it just gives you a really fantastic 
kind of mandolin type sound, but uh, with a really great extra fullness to it. Um, we often talk about it as being the, the uh, mandolin for a guitar player. So it's got that you know, wider neck that feels more comfortable and just the proportions really work for a guitar player. So that's the Amicus, finished in black carbon. And then another one is going out to uh, David in Guernsey. And uh, it's the exact same guitar, except it's got um, a harbor reek of an ear on top. So you can see it's got the carbon fiber and uh, that's right the way through the top of the guitar as well. But we've got a very thin wood veneer on this top and uh, it's only uh, about 0.6 of a millimeter thick. By the time we're finished sanding it and detailing it, it's about 0.3 of a millimeter thick. So it's like paper thin. And, uh, but it gives that really nice look and beauty. So uh, I think the black lines and the back markings and the harborica uh, really work nicely with the black carbon contrast really well together. So Curtis in Ontario. Um, Curtis has got an X7. The X7 is our uh, short scale guitar. It's a 24 inch scale and um, it's a smaller body, more parlor sized guitar. This is a, a beautiful version of it. Um, it's Harbour, uh, sorry, uh, spalted Chen Chen and uh, with a green transparent tint over the top. You'll see another spalted Chen Chen in its natural form a little bit further down and uh, green carbon on the back and sides. On the fretboard, we've got the nice ring inlays and it's got this adjustable bridge. So it's a fully adjustable, height adjustable and it's an eatable bridge and uh, that is going to uh, a Graftec preamp. Um, so uh, it's a really, really nice example of our X7. Grant in California also was an X7. Another fine example. And uh, this one has Zercotti. Actually, there's a few Zercotti guitars in uh, this week's video. And um, another really nice guitar and Zercotti on the headstock. We always do the headstock to match the body. Uh, here on the 12th fret, we've got this little uh, Celtic knot inlay here. Um, black carbon on the back and sides, and the black goes really nicely with the, the almost totally jet black lines that run throughout the Zercotti here. So a good combination. Then Chris in Essex has gone for X20. So our X20 is a sort of a dreadnought size guitar, but with a, a lot more ergonomics than what you would normally expect in a regular dreadnought. Uh, feels much smaller than a regular dreadnought size guitar, but very versatile. Uh, this one finished in uh, red carbon. It's got our uh, combo pickup system, so it's got the Graftec pickups here, uh, the piezo pickups, but it's also got a set of K&K &K contact pickups inside underneath the soundboard. Uh, you can blend the two of them together here um, with the, the, the two volume controls, and uh, it goes out through uh, a mono cable here. You can put a mono where you can put a stereo. If you put a stereo in, you can split them. Uh, or you can just go mono and straight into, uh, into one output. And uh, finished with the uh, white dot inlays. Then we've got Joseph in Florida. So Joseph's gone for Koa. I've been uh, working on a few Koa guitars recently and I really, really love Koa. Uh, this one is, um, has got amazing flame running down the center. A uh, really nice piece of darker wood just centered off here. I think it was, gives great character to the center line and, uh, and also the darker sides uh, make it a very unique feature on this guitar. And it's finished with black carbon on the back and sides, uh, which contrasts really nicely with the, that top. And, uh, and it's got our carbon pinless bridge. And uh, it's going out to Joseph in Florida. Now, Andrew in Maryland. So Andrew has gone for Harborica. So uh, this is the same as this Harborica, uh, except this one has a red transparent finish over the top. And uh, you can see how this, the contrast between the light and dark wood really comes out in the color. So whenever you put color over the top of our uh, different veneers, the lighter wood will always bring up the color and the, the blacks obviously will stay almost totally black. Um, so uh, that's a really nice, Harborica is a really nice veneer to put uh, a color over the top. I think it takes a, takes a color really well. And red carbon on the back and sides. So if we look at the back and sides, actually for an X20, it's, uh, you're gonna see the, the contours and details here that 
are subtle but really make this an exceptional guitar when you play it. Uh, it's got the asymmetrical side here which just allows that guitar to really tuck in and sit very comfortably into your knee. Uh, it's got a little rib bevel subtly molded in here and uh, the extended neck access. Uh, removing the heel and giving this extended neck access just really helps when if you're playing right up into these upper registers. So uh, if you've got an entire fretboard on your guitar you want to be able to play it all. Um, it's always been kind of my philosophy, why put frets somewhere where you can't actually play them. So uh, over time we've developed the contours and the shapes around just getting you better access right across the guitar. Uh, this one's going to Huang in uh, Taiwan and uh, this is another X20. This one's finished in Powell Ferro. It's got uh, gold dots up the fretboard and it's got the gold Godo 510 tuners. Uh, and the uh, gold strap buttons here and then it's got a blue back and sides so uh, it's a very unique combination to have the the color uh, going with the natural top but uh, you know it's that's one of the great things in our 3d builder now it's given really really great a number of uh, different variations so if you haven't been to our 3d builder please go to emeraldguitars.com uh, find a 3d builder and in there you can build any of these guitars, any of the configurations you can see here, you can visually build on our, on our 3D builder. Uh, you can add in the different combinations of pickups, inlays, colors for the back, colors for the top. And, uh, and so that allows you to, to design something unique like this. And it's great to see guitars that were designed on there now starting to come through. Uh, I really love the variety that we get every week. It's, uh, we had a lot of variety before, but it just seems like it's gone up a notch since we built the the builder and I think that's been such a good tool because you guys then can visualize exactly what it is we're building for you in advance. Um, so this guitar is going to Richard in New York. This is uh, Zercotti, also done with a red transparent and uh, you can see how the really the darker wood at the side has a little bit of the red that comes through but on this light heartwood or the center wood here uh, it just becomes that vibrant red. It's um, very reminiscent of a guitar we did a number of years ago, the, uh, the Ruby Red Cross, where we had a Zercotti that had almost like a cross pattern in it here. And uh, it was a very eye-catching guitar, really stood out and got a lot of attention. Um, never been able to get a piece of veneer that actually had a similar pattern, but, uh, but this is very, very similar in a lot of ways. Um, really stands out. It's uh, white dots on the fretboard, and then we've got red vibrant weave on the back and sides. So, uh, so our vibrant colors are done by um, uh, having a fiber that's actually metalized. So there's a very, very thin coating of silver put over the top of it. And then that gives us this real glow to the fiber. So whenever we put the red transparent over that, uh, it just really pops. So uh, I think that goes great with that. You can just see this, this glowing back and the glowing center. I think the two work nicely hand in hand. Very cool. Then we've got Roger in Virginia. Now this whole guitar just glows. Um, this, is a, this is a really nice piece. So this is Spalta Chen Chen uh, on the top. And um, Spalta Chen Chen just has a really nice warmth and glow to it. It's, in some ways it's kind of like the Koa. Has that same kind of shimmer and glow that Koa has. Uh, this one has uh, that married with the vibrant weave on the back and sides with, the, with this amber gold finish. Uh, this has been quite popular. The first one that we did kind of like this was for a competition that we ran a couple of years ago, uh, or last year actually, and uh, it was a really striking guitar and a lot of people have been coming looking for replicas of that. Uh, and we, want, we built one actually very similar with this combination with Spalt and Chen Chen and uh, vibrant weave uh, not so very long ago. Um, this one has got the, the Celtic vines running up the neck, finished in white with the gold infinity knot at the 12th fret. And uh, it's got our LR Bags element pickup system in there. Now I'm going into the first of a couple of lefties. So we do make left-handed guitars, so if you're a lefty player, you'll know that there's not a lot of options out there for you if you're, uh, if you're interested in a carbon fiber guitar. Um, so a few years ago we, we built a mold for um, a left-handed guitar and it's a big deal. We can't do it right across our range because it, it takes a very specific mold. 
just to build that one guitar. Um, so it's, uh, it wasn't really viable to do it in all range, but we do it on the X20. Um, so uh, this one is uh, finished in Pau Ferro, a very, very fine example of Pau Ferro. Some amazing detail and, uh, and markings on that. Just love all the swirls and the, the contours of this. It's uh, just a really great example of the beauty that nature can create. Uh, I love the colors, love the markings. And, uh, and then on the back and sides has been left natural carbon. And uh, so that's a great contrast between that and, uh, and that beautiful top. Um, the fretboard has our, uh, our Celtic knot inlays, Trinity knots rolling down here, and uh, the combo knot on the 12th fret. And uh, this is, actually this one doesn't have a pickup system built into this one, so uh, it's acoustic only. Now, check this one out. So this is another one of the previous customs uh, from, uh, let's say another era. Um, so I guess I should, you know, if you're, if you're watching this for the first time, a lot of the custom things that I had been previously doing, I had to step away for, certainly for a period of time. And uh, so we're not offering things just as exotic as this, but uh, this is one of the last ones that I've been finishing up. So this one's going out to Jordan. Um, he's in California. And uh, this guitar is an eight string and it's half fretted, half fretless. So, uh, so it's fan fret, but uh, we've continued the frets on the first four, and uh, then the bottom four are fretless, but with lines just to kind of help you out a little bit. Um, this guitar is just about as exotic as it gets, and uh, being left-handed just added an extra degree of complexity to it, but a really, really nice piece. It's uh, actually got two entirely separate MIDI systems and, uh, and a piezo system. So with the two MIDI, because you can only have uh, MIDI for up to six strings, he wanted to be able to trigger the whole thing separately. So uh, there's one MIDI unit for, um, for the fretless section and one for the fretted. So uh, a really, really unique instrument. Um, a challenge to build, but uh, I think it was a pleasure to build at the same time. So I look forward to hearing Jordan play this. Jerry in California as well, uh, Jerry and Jordan. Um, so this is uh, also Zercotti, and uh, the Zercotti comes with so many different um, styles and colors and finishes, and uh, this Zercotti, it's, I often say Zercotti is like a patchwork. It almost looks like somebody disassembled the wood and then put it all together, and it's like these jagged lines that are running down here, these look, the, the pieces just almost look like they've been put together in a collage and uh, it's very unique. Um, the, the lighter wood in the center has this beautiful model detail whenever you get in very close on it. You can probably not see it here, but uh, in person it has a really nice character in the center. And, uh, and then it's got the Celtic knots, the gold Celtic knots running up the neck. Uh, and then the light bit of wood again on the, on the headstock just carries that through very nicely. Back and sides is finished in, the, in that dark amber finish and, uh, and it goes nicely with that darker top. And this is our X30 body guitars, that's our big jumbo body. So another jumbo gone out to uh, David in Washington. Uh, this one's Pau Ferro. And uh, our, uh, this is our, I think it's a red Pau Ferro we call in this. Uh, it's a much redder, uh, dark, uh, deeper color on this Pau Ferro. And um, this one's got a, a red back and sides, uh, which goes quite nicely with that, the, the tones of that Pau Ferro top. Uh, gold tuners, and uh, it's actually got uh, glow in the dark and lays down the side as well. Um, so that's a really nice jumbo to finish that set off. Now, two really cool pieces to finish. So Nick in Georgia. So check this out. Uh, this is orchestral arch top, and a really, really exceptional <laughs> example of it. Finished on the top with um, a Royal Ebony, uh, with a red transparent over the top. And uh, Royal Ebony works really good when you put a color over it because there's such a contrast in the colors on that veneer. Um, this one has fan frets. Pretty unusual in our. Um, uh, for our, our uh, 
uh, Kestrel large tops that have fan frets, but we have done a couple in the past, and uh, it's something that's certainly possible to do. It's uh, got the Crevo humbucker, it's uh, got a Graftec piezo bridge here, and a uh, combination between the two. So, uh, so you've got your volume here and here for the Crevo and, uh, and the humbucker, or sorry, the, the Crevo and the Graftec. Uh, and then it's uh, also got your mono or stereo output, depending on what way you want to put that together. So really, really great combination. Very unique arch top guitar. Really beautiful to look at and to play. And the last one we've got is going out to Ernest in Massachusetts. This is a pretty unique one to finish off today. And um, this is our Chimera, uh, Chimera double neck guitar. And I think this is a really good example of what carbon fiber can do. You've got uh, 18 strings pulling on the top of a guitar and structurally that's a lot of force. But with carbon fiber, it just works so well. So it allows us to have enough um, strength to be able to hold all the strings and keep it very stable, uh, but at the same time still be really nice and resonant so it works well as an acoustic guitar. Uh, on this one, it's got uh, some, some unique custom features. So the neck down here uh, has been done with our, uh, what we would have previously called our level three pickup system, uh, Offer X10. Um, so it's got your piezos, your crevo, and, uh, and then it's also got MIDI output. Uh, all controlled here. So basically we've handled this one separately where everything on this neck is, is on one pickup and uh, one pickup system and on one output. Then we've got a separate, a separate elements pickup system and, uh, and that's running here for, uh, for the 12 string. So it's very much a separated system. Uh, he was wanting to really get creative here on the six string side so uh, an awful lot of opportunity to, to really do a lot on the six string. Uh, you've got your your uh, MIDI or your sorry magnetic volume, piezo volume, and the MIDI volume. Uh, you've got uh, your patch switching here for your MIDI. You go between your MIDI sounds and your guitar sounds, and uh, piezo, uh, MIDI, sorry piezo, magnetic, and uh, both in the middle. So it takes a little bit of figuring out to get uh, the controls just right, but uh, a lot going on on that guitar. Uh, the veneer on the top is Macassar Ebony. Uh, that Macassar Ebony has the beautiful lines, uh, contrasting lines of uh, browns and black. And uh, then we've got the lines coming up the top. So I think all those lines and the, the necks, you know, it's just a lot of lateral lines and I think that really is a very, very attractive piece. Uh, back and sides is finished in amber. And uh, just another outstanding guitar to finish. So I hope you've enjoyed that, um, taking that little tour through what we do here. Uh, as you can see, we have a, a very varied range. You know, if you want to just discover Emerald guitars for the first time, then certainly go and check out the website and uh, watch some of our videos and some of our uh, discussions about the different types of guitars and why they're designed sp specific ways. And if you've got any questions, stick them in the uh, comments and uh, and we'll do our best to, um, to answer them. So be sure to subscribe, uh, connect with us, and, uh, and hopefully you'll see our stuff on a weekly basis. We do this every week, and uh, we enjoy hearing the feedback from you, and I know you guys are enjoying watching the videos. So thank you, and have a great week.